pray with me once again today? Oh Lord, we pray now that in this time of great stress, in this time where we're all cooped up in our homes, we pray now that you would take away any distractions, take away anything else that's keeping us away from hearing your word today. We pray that you would help us to totally focus with our whole minds, our whole hearts, our whole beings upon you today, O oh Lord. For you are our strength, you are our hope in the midst of these trying times, O oh Lord. Help us to hear your word today. We pray this in your name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I have great memories of that day growing up. It was always a great day. A day full of excitement. At the beginning of the worship service, I got to join all the other kids marching around the sanctuary, waving palm branches. And everyone seemed to be so joyful and so exuberant. You could feel the start of spring in the air. And Easter was just a week away. Yes, I have great memories of Palm Sunday growing up. And thinking back on those memories makes me think about that very first Palm Sunday. Not the first one in my life or, or even in your life, but the very first one that's mentioned in the Bible. I'm sure you know the story of that first Palm Sunday in the Bible. Where Jesus came riding into town triumphantly as the people celebrated him. We think of this as the beginning of the end of Jesus' ministry. We lump it in today with what happened just a few days later when he was betrayed and killed on the cross. In our mind, we see this day as a sort of prelude to what would come those few days later. But you and I have the luxury of knowing the end of the story. The people in the story who were witnessing this in real time had no idea that was going to happen. For them, Palm Sunday was going to be just the beginning of Jesus' ministry. They expected that he would become their king, their Messiah, their Savior. They were so excited to see what he was going to do for them. They expected that that's what would happen. No, for them, this wasn't the end at all. This was just the beginning. And so they came waving their palm branches round and round in the air, fawning all over Jesus, wanting to join in the celebration. Today we might compare it to a political rally, where people cheer for their chosen candidate. And instead of waving palm branches, they wave campaign signs and wear t-shirts that celebrate their candidate where people passionately argue that their candidate is the one to lead us to a more hopeful future, where people put their trust in that person to save us from things happening around us. We'll stand in line for hours and fill arenas, pack stadiums just to show our support for our favorite candidate. We're not so much different than those people that day. No, we're not different than them at all. I think today we can actually appreciate the deep longing that people had for a Savior. Yes, we know the story. We can picture it today. We can even place ourselves right there in the crowd. In fact, let's take a look at how Scripture actually describes it. In John 12, it says, The great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him. Shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the King of Israel! Jesus found a young donkey when he heard this and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, God of Zion. See, your King is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him. And that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. That's the picture the Bible paints of that 
first Palm Sunday when Jesus came riding into town. The people there that day could not have missed what was happening. Maybe they didn't understand everything until later. But it was clear that this man, Jesus, was riding into town to be welcomed as the Messiah everyone had been looking for. Everyone was ready and waiting for him to come and be celebrated. And as I reflect on this picture today, I see there being three groups of people that surrounded Jesus as he rode into town that day. The first group of people mentioned were the devout followers of Jesus. The people that it says excitedly went out to meet him and, and waved their palm branches and shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. They were the devout followers of Jesus who enthusiastically supported him. They were totally committed to him. Now the second group of people the text mentions are those who really weren't exactly sure who Jesus was. They're just curious about him. It says, many people, because they had heard of him raising Lazarus from the grave, went out to meet him. It doesn't say they necessarily celebrated Jesus as a Messiah or, or waved palm branches. It just says they had heard about what he had done raising Lazarus, so they went out to greet him. In other words, they went out to see him, to see what all the fuss was about. So the second group is just curious about Jesus. They're not really totally committed to actually following him. At this point. Then the third group it mentions is the Pharisees, who it says were adamantly opposed to Jesus. To them it was not a question of who Jesus is or whether or not they should commit themselves to following him. No, the Pharisees thought Jesus was bad news from the start. So as they see Jesus coming, they're going to plot to take him out any way they can. Which, of course, foreshadows what would happen later. They were totally, a hundred percent, a thousand percent opposed to him. So we have three groups surrounding Jesus that day. Three groups that make up the crowd around him. Those who were enthusiastically committed to following him. Those who were just curious but not really committed in any way. And those who were dead set against him. And as I reflect on this picture today, the question that I think is appropriate to ask myself and to ask you is what group are you a part of? What group are you a part of today? Where would you have been in the crowd? Are you the committed follower? The curious person who's not really committed? Or perhaps the one who's actually dead set against Jesus in his message. Now, of course, all of us would jump to shout out our answer, right? We'd each proudly declare, I'm the committed follower. Of course, I'm totally down with following Jesus. I'm in the church all the time. I'm even watching this online service right now and I can't be there. That's how committed I am. Yeah, I'm the committed follower. But we have to be careful not to rush to that answer. Because the truth is that it's not that simple. It's not that easy. See, most of the people who were out there on the streets that very first Palm Sunday, enthusiastically cheering him, who thought they were totally committed to him, just like you and me, betrayed him just a week later. Even his very closest followers, the disciples, would follow in that path of betrayal. See, on Palm Sunday, when it was comfortable, when it was popular, when it was easy, everyone wanted to follow Jesus. But later that week, when they realized following him actually meant they had to go against the grain and be willing to change their life, even give their life for Jesus, everyone wasn't so willing. Marty Bowler says, one of the scariest questions in the Palm Sunday story is this. How will I respond when Jesus comes riding humbly into my life? Will I recognize the time of Jesus coming to me? Will I recognize and welcome Jesus' personal visit? Will I truly follow him? Or will I walk away when it gets too difficult? Or when I don't like what Jesus wants me to do? 
Yes, when it's comfortable, when it's popular, when it's easy, when the crowds are cheering, Hosanna, Hosanna. It's no problem to follow Jesus. But the question is, what about the rest of the time? Let us say, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, not just with our lips today, on Palm Sunday, but with the way we live our lives every day. For indeed, we do have a Messiah that has come to save us. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Oh, Jesus. We can put ourselves there that day when you came riding into town. We can imagine what it would have been like to see all the crowds, to hear all the sounds, all the cheering, all the excitement. Yes, we can put ourselves there. We can imagine ourselves cheering with the crowds that day. But the question for us today is, how do we follow you today? How do we show people your love and your truth today, in this moment? That indeed is a more difficult question, a real-life question. It's not just a question in the abstract about something that happened years ago, but a question that really affects us in this moment. So we pray that you would help us to indeed follow you, indeed treat you as the king of our lives. We pray this now in your name, the name of Jesus, who is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. It's in that name that we pray. Amen.